Hello there guys, welcome to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Um, it has been a long time since I posted my last video, but here we are again, we're back. Um, and the first tutorial I've got for you is a very special one. Um, about a year ago, I promised that a tutorial on fire, a fire propagation, a fire spreading system was coming. And I never actually got around to it for whatever reason. So today I'm going to bring you that tutorial. And in fact, over the next two weeks, I'll be bringing you a few tutorials. Um, and, but they're going to be in a slightly different format. Um, I'm going to take an, do an experiment here and instead of showing you building it step by step, I will start with it already built and walk you through how it works. And if you want to pause at any point and look at the blueprint and copy it, that's fine. Just pause and slowly work your way through the video. So what we have here is a couple of uh, bushes set up uh, with T and U for Totally Unreal because why not? Um, and basically what happens is this one is going to set on fire first automatically and then the fire will spread along these other bushes So let's just take a look at it. Let's just take a look at that in action So like I said the first one will start on fire up here and then we'll spread the Fire will jump to the other bushes and work its way around until all of them are consumed and on fire now unlike in the trailer when I was uh, advertising this tutorial coming and I had multiple fire things spawning. I've actually simplified this um, and it works a lot better. So I think I was trying to be a bit too complex with that one. Anyway, let's jump into how this works. So we have a bush, we have a blueprint here. Let's uh, let's make this up from scratch. Oh, actually, no, we're not doing that, are we? No. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you this blueprint. So let's fire that up, head on over to the viewport. And you can see here, I only have three components. I have the static mesh, which is the main thing. This can be anything, it doesn't need to be a bush. I can have whatever the hell those are. I could have these if I wanted, but you know, uh, I'm going to take it back to the bush. So you've got yourself a static mesh. Um, you have this collision sphere here. Now this collision sphere is quite important. This is how far uh, the fire will jump. So if this bush is on fire, when it's time to spread the fire, if uh, the flammable object needs to be inside this sphere here so you know if i'm on f if i'm here i won't set on fire whereas if i'm here inside it i will set on fire and to top it all off of course we have the particle system now this template here will become a fire like that and as you remember earlier that was how it looked burning but obviously we need to leave that clear right now because the bush doesn't need to start on fire uh, i'm just going to quickly change this back because it's annoying me Okay, so, yeah, so, so basically just adding these components, um, the mesh should be quite self-explanatory. It's all in add component up here. Um, you know, you can add your meshes and these are your collisions here, the sphere collision. And of course, the particle system you will be able to find at the top here under common. So that's that. Let's take a look at what's actually running in the background. Now, it's quite simple. It's, it's, it's very simple, in fact. We, have a, we start with a custom event. Now these are created by right clicking in your blueprint and typing custom event, adding a custom event and naming it whatever. In this case, we've named it spread fire. When this is called, it's going to change the template of the particle system referenced here. And to get a reference, you drag off, get the particle system and then set template. And then you would choose the asset you want, which in this case we want it to set on fire. So that's that. So we've set it on fire. Then we have a delay here. This delay is how long it should burn for before spreading. So at the moment, I've set it to 0.5. You noticed it was actually quite quick to spread around the place. If I set that to 2, I can just show you exactly what it does. So remember how fast it spread before. Now it's going to take a little bit longer to get itself burning and spreading around. And you can almost count that 1, 2, 1 two one two yeah so that's exactly what that is there i mean if we set it to something ridiculously low the fire will spread very fast once it starts almost instant inst instantaneous there so that's what that does that's that's what we control with that um so once we've once we've done that and now this is how we actually spread the fire to other nearby flammable objects we have a for each loop and a forage loop takes an array. In this case, the array we're going to provide is the one provided by the node get overlapping actors. So we want to see what is overlapping us. So we leave this as a reference to self. 
and the other classes we want to look for are I know it's named fire cube it should have been named fire bush it started out life as a bush as a cube sorry so that's that's this class the class that we're in now we want to look for others of the same type so fire cube <coughs> excuse me so as we iterate around this loop here the first thing we're going to do is do a branch so we're going to check whether a condition is met sorry i'll turn that off the condition that needs to be checked is whether the actor that we're touching has the correct tag in this case the tag we're looking for is flammable so if i come back into the world view here and select any one of these bushes down the side here in the details pane you can find the actor tags under the actor section here and you may need to expand that out like so and then you'll find an array of tags and we see that they all have one here called flammable so all of these bushes are flammable if I take that out of this tag um, and clear that delete that one you'll see that when we spread the fire it won't go past the highlighted bush there so the fire is spreading and it won't actually be able to set this one on fire because it's not flammable so that's one easy way of controlling what you can burn and what you can't burn so let's uh, let's have that flammable tag back in there. So make sure that on any object that you want to burn, it contains the code that I'm showing you now and has the actor tag flammable. So if that's true, if we are touching something that's flammable, well, we're going to set it on fire. So it won't be flammable anymore. You can't set an already burnt down house on fire again because it's already consumed all the fuel that's there. It's no longer flammable. So we're going to get a reference to ourself, which you can do by right clicking and just typing self get a reference to that and then off that you, you can go for get tags so that'll return an array of all tags that you have and then after that it's simply remove item and the item we want to remove is flammable there we go so I'll remove that now so once we've removed that the fire cube that we are currently uh, the the, the Sorry about this, it's quite hard to explain. The actor that we have just taken the tag off, we also want to cast to him and say, okay, it's your turn to do something, I'm calling to you, it's your turn to spread fire. And if you remember, spread fire there was the custom event that we created at the beginning. So if you imagine 10 of these different windows and the first one starts and runs through all the code and it touches the second and third one, then the second and third one run through this code at the same time. And they touch the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh one. And then the, all of those burn and run at the same time. In fact, I can set up a quite a quick demonstration of just how this works here. So these are all the same object. So I will start with one. He'll set on fire. And then because those rings there are overlapping, those two will set on fire. And then when those two set on fire, I can have more set on fire. As long as the rings overlap, that what that's what um, that's something that has to be there to allow the jump to be made. So I'll just quickly spread these out now, and then we'll I'll stop it there. It's taken a bit too much time, but basically you can see how that will spread and quite quickly begin to consume everything. So two lights up four. Obviously, if there was another, um, if there was eight around that now, then it would light up eight. You can you can spread this fire quite quickly. And quite effectively um, that basically sums it up it's a much quicker tutorial it doesn't delve into as much detail if I would like some feedback in the comments if you like this style of tutorial if you like just looking over what exists being able to pause the video and um, and copy it then by all means let me know and I'll carry on if you prefer the ones where I build it there in front of you and you can follow along with me then again, ju just let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll switch back to that format before the next video. Um, so that is going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've uh, learned how to start spreading the fire. The interesting thing about this is this is going to be a tutorial series. We're going to learn how to do a much more detailed fire system than this. We're going to learn how to spawn a, uh, a decal underneath where you are of burnt ground. We're going to then move on to adding... Uh, changing the material so instead of being a nice lovely green bush it becomes an ashy black brown one we change the material on it we can then dye the flame out and replace it with some smoke um, so this could become a really really beautiful 
transition of setting things on fire. So stay tuned for those parts of the tutorial. Uh, as always guys, please do subscribe, leave the video a thumbs up if this helps you out, and as always, I will see you on the next video.